Good evening, Peter Overton reporting from Windsor tonight. New South Wales is under siege from the elements yet again. This time, a wet weather system that just will not stop. The eastern half of our state has been pounded by relentless downpours. And tonight, it's the Hawkesbury on the outskirts of Sydney that is the centre of this catastrophe. We have reporters in all of the key locations this evening. Damien Ryan begins our coverage. From the air, the sheer magnitude of an unfolding disaster, the Hawkesbury River has become an inland sea. And Windsor, like an island, is keeping its head above the water. It's also a close call for dozens of rural properties along the old riverbanks. And in the middle of all this, rescuers wading into waist-deep water to lead a horse to safety. The Premier wanted to see it for herself, but the mission was over before it began, aborted by the weather behind our latest calamity. I think we're going to abort this flight, everybody. Copy that. I know for many people, um, they will feel like it's breaking point. Some communities who were battered by the bushfires are now being battered by the floods. Here's our kitchen and living area, currently 1.2 metres underwater. Dan Devine showed us around his North Street home in Windsor. Put a lot of effort in and, and uh, look, it is, but you just got to say to yourself, well, let's come back in a few days and clean it up. Next door is a house built in 1846. Lily Sullivan has been the proud owner for 20 years. So I've probably seen a flood in its day. It's had many, so the 1867 was a lot higher. Another downpour, this is what makes this weather event so different to others that have plagued these communities over the years. The rain has been falling persistently since Thursday and the forecast is it will be heavy again tomorrow. It's still raining, you know, they're expecting it to come up in another couple of metres. Um, it's just been frantic around here. Making matters worse, the water from the upper parts of the Nepean River, which flooded Penrith, will flow into the Hawkesbury around Richmond and Windsor this evening, which will cause flooding downstream to last for the next few days. As many as 3,000 residents in the Hawkesbury have so far been forced from their homes. Most walked or drove out. Today, they paddled back. You had a look over there, how is it? The neighbour's house on the corner, it's already gone through their first garage, so you oh, can't see that it? much of it up yeah. top. It was a similar view for the owners of this Richmond property. Shed. Stables. Of the brand new Windsor Bridge, there was almost nothing to see. Apparently flood proof, it vanished under the flood waters. It didn't stop a dentist on an emergency call out. It was the only way across was through the water, so the SES have been kind enough to help out. Suitcase packed for his mercy mission to help patients in North Richmond. A chopper was brought in to assist for another emergency. A pregnant woman airlifted from the floodwaters to the Nepean Hospital. And it wasn't just people who needed help. We've pulled nine head of cattle out. Now one of these horses. That was in Richmond. In Wilberforce, a number of sheep had to be rescued by boat. A few kilometres away at Oakville, a whole farm had to be evacuated as the waters closed in. Chickens, ducks, donkeys moved to safer ground. I hope I can swim, and but um, yeah, the animals have to come first. That's, that's it. They don't know what to do in this. And this rabbit looked all at sea, waiting to be rescued. The army is said to be on the way, but in the meantime, police have stepped up. Sandbags and good luck, the only line of defence. Damien Ryan, Nine News. All right, we have breaking news for you. Nine's Tiffany Genders has exclusive access on board a marine rescue boat on the Hawkesbury River. Tiff, what are you seeing? Well, Pete, with the Windsor Bridge flooded and roads cut off, this is one of the only ways to assess the damage. It really is unbelievable. We have seen homes with water up 
to the windows, businesses and boat clubs swamped. The current is really strong and there is so much debris, gas bottles, wooden pallets and even a caravan floating by. Now there is more rain expected at Windsor tonight. The Hawkesbury River expected to peak at 13 metres tomorrow morning. They haven't seen a weather event like this in 30 years. All right, Tiffany, thank you. Right now, there are fresh evacuation warnings for Western Sydney. Residents in Londonderry and Wetherill Park on high alert. The Nepean is the other river of major concern. Hundreds of residents in parts of Penrith, Mulgoa and Jamison Town forced to flee their homes. Today, they were allowed back in to assess the damage. Penrith mother of four, Kate Connell, hasn't slept in days. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, it's really hard. She watched floodwaters rise over the weekend before they rushed into her Ladbury Avenue property in the early hours of this morning. The hairdresser's newly built home hair salon swamped. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> we won't be doing business for a little while and have to rebuild it all over over again. Water a metre deep flooded Jason Burns' Penrith home. His basement wine cellar turned mud bath, but his main concern was for his family. It just seemed to come up really, really quick in the space of about half an hour. The road was flooding and we sort of just had to chuck the kids in the car and take and eh, go to grandma's. Jason's a plumber, so he spent the day pumping the filthy sludge out of his home. From the air, it's clear why people fled. Downstream from Penrith is Londonderry, where homes are engulfed. Cattle huddle on new islands made by Mother Nature. Big wheelie bins and four-wheel drives carried away in the sepia-hued surge. These two cars underwater, barely visible. We're constantly told not to drive through flooded roads, but despite the warnings, this woman pushes on and becomes trapped in her car. I've called the police. Shane Brown and his mates run in, pulling the woman out of the window and walking her through waist-deep water. Some people just need to watch what they're doing the and don't drive through the <laughs> floodwaters. Along with the RFS, Shane and his friends push the stricken station wagon back to where it should have stopped in the first place. Nearby, the SES comes to the rescue of rescue animals. Crates perched on inflatable boats as a Londonderry shelter is evacuated. This dog clings to a volunteer as it's carried to dry ground. The SES working overtime, rescuing a five-month-old baby boy along with four adults when they became trapped. Last night, the Nepean River raged, peaking at more than 10 metres. You can see this light post almost going under as waters rapidly receded today the pole re-emerged. While levels have dropped significantly, parks and playgrounds are still submerged. Moragamba is spilling, so too the Nepean Dam, and more heavy rain is on the way. With the sodden ground in front of their homes slipping away, Glenmore Park residents are taking no chances, banding together to sandbag in case the river rises again. I don't think we'll be out of the woods till Thursday according to the weather predictions. In breaking news, as we go to air, a rescue is taking place right behind me. A woman, her children and a number of pets are trapped in a home and they are going to be rescued by an SES inflatable boat. Uh, residents here where I am who live near Rickaby's Creek in Londonderry have been told to prepare to evacuate. As you can see, the water is closing in on their homes and the rain is still hammering down. A prepared to evacuate warning has also been issued for residents in Wetherill Park who live downstream from the Wide Mere Detention Basin, which has been damaged. So it's a very nervous night for many people who await what is to come. Pete? Natalia, thank you. On our mid-north coast, thousands of Kempsey residents are spending a second night away from home. The CBD under threat by the rising Maclay River. Nine News reporter Grace Fitzgibbon is there for us this evening. Grace, the situation changing by the hour.
It is Pete. Kempsey has officially recorded its heaviest 24-hour rainfall in 47 years at 226 millimetres. And the Weather Bureau is warning there is more on the way with a high pressure system heading in this direction. Tonight, Kempsey locals are going to sleep crossing their fingers. They are hopeful that somehow the Maclay River will manage to hold its banks over overnight. But at this rate, Pete, it feels like it's not a matter of if, but when. The only way to truly understand the scale of this disaster is from the air. The town of Kempsey slowly disappearing underwater. The fast moving murky torrent stretching as far as the eye can see. While residents in this part of the country have seen their fair share of floods, they've never seen one quite like this. I've been here for three or four floods and, and I haven't seen this before. This is very local flooding, whereas normally it's upriver. With the Maclay River close to bursting its banks, it was a sleepless night. The town centre evacuated just before midnight. Evacuation order. Including our motel. We have just had the SES bang on our motel doors. Um, they're telling us that we need to evacuate immediately. The levee is breaking in the CBD and the floodwaters uh, are expected to inundate the whole of the town centre. Around 80 residents forced to abandon their homes and head to the evacuation centre. This is the reality for people with homes inside the flood zone. Simply grab whatever you can and put it up high. The town remains divided by floodwaters. Those in the west lining up for last minute supplies at the only supermarket where bread, milk and meat are sold out. It's pretty busy. They're letting one in, one out at a time. So yeah, it's pretty busy. It's hectic in there. As you can tell people are a little bit scared. They're not quite sure as to what's going to happen. Residents in the south remain completely cut off. The SES delivering food and urgent medical supplies. Yeah, we're very tired, but uh, we can't stop the work. There's communities in dire need and, and we're here to assist. We're here for four days and uh, we'll do whatever's needed. An elderly woman with a broken hip had to be rescued, transported across the floodwaters into a waiting ambulance. Much needed feed for livestock was also delivered. Today, the Deputy Premier flew in touring the flood ravaged region, still very much recovering from last summer's bushfires. We keep talking about regional people being resilient. This is testing everybody. Grace Fitzgibbon, Nine News. There is some encouraging news tonight with the situation on parts of the mid-north coast improving as we go to air. A short time ago, the water receded enough for roads to reopen around Taree, where the clean-up is already underway. After days underwater, the Manning River began to recede, leaving behind a muddy mess. It's gut-wrenching when it's all you have. Yesterday, this arcade was under a metre of water. Today, armed with mops and brooms, Taree residents went back to work. It's more not knowing, actually, not knowing where we stand at the moment. But time will tell. Just got to clean up. So we, we're all in together. For two days, the town of Taree has been cut off, and this is the big problem right here. Flood damage to the main road in the Martin Bridge. The bad news is there's more weather on the way, and it hasn't been fixed. Motorists on the Pacific Highway spending days in their cars. We're tired. We just want to go home. Ron Gizzy Camp popped out for supplies on Saturday. He hasn't been home since. Basically, what I've got is what I'm wearing. It's the service stations have a lot of food. Pretty much over pies at the moment, though, I have to say. At nearby Tankari, SES crews worked through the night, rescuing five adults and four children staying at the caravan park who became stranded by rising water. These cows swept away on Saturday, turning up four kilometres away at Tononi. <coughs> Further north at Port Macquarie, waterfront homes are now underwater homes. Surf Lifesavers moving inland on rescue boats, helping with evacuations. People are getting low on medications. Um, there's been um, some pregnant women um, that needed to get to hospital. A different type of evacuation, this man pulling a stingray from his living room. At Newcastle, the sand was replaced by sea foam as surfers brave the choppy seas, while at Port Stephens, they were surfing in the backyard. Despite the devastation, 
still smiling. I know, why not? <laughs> There's a lot more people a lot worse off than we are, let me say that. These locals still manage to have a laugh. I'll just sit on my chair and have a beer. <laughs> Making the most of their new swim up bar. Pete, there is a real sense that this heavy rain is uh, back tonight here in Taree. Behind me is where the Manning River surged up the road into the town and officials are really closely watching its banks tonight. It is just so vulnerable along the side of this river. Uh, the heavy rain tomorrow is really set to uh, set in around the northwest of here. Uh, they've seen some of the heaviest rainfalls they've had in 91 years over the last 48 hours. So make no mistake tonight, Pete, Flood Watch is very much still on for the Mid-North Coast. All right, Ruth, thank you very much.